Good morning, champions. Welcome to the assembly of God's conduits, of the conduits of God's love. You're not sure, you, you don't think you are part of the assembly of the conduit of God's love. Clap like you understand it. Hallelujah. Yes. So say this to yourself. I am a channel of God's unfailing love. Say, I am a conduit of God's love. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants to love people through you. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 and 14 verse 1. I read from the New King James Version. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. And then 14 verse 1. But before that, let me read the last verse of the chapter 13. It says, and now abide faith. That's 13 verse 13. Hope. Love these three but the greatest is love and Paul concludes in a way none of us would have done better except by the Holy Spirit pursue love and desire spiritual gifts but especially that you may prophesy that's 14 verse 1 our interest this morning is that command pursue love the pursuit of love you know we talk a lot about spiritual gifts but we don't talk much about pursuing love we desire spiritual gifts historically the word translated pursue was used by, for describing authorities when they are chasing down criminals so that gives you the idea of the intensity the efforts the focus behind the word it is the same word paul uses when in philippians 3 14 he talks about pressing toward the mark for the, high, for the price of the high calling in Christ. So to pursue means to move rapidly and decisively towards an ob objective, to hasten, to press on towards a definite goal or purpose, to strive for, to seek, to aspire. You cannot pursue something half-heartedly. You cannot pursue something passively. You cannot pursue something unintentionally. You cannot say I'm pursuing something because for pursuit to be pursued, it, it requires intense effort. It requires diligence. It requires focus. So here is Paul calling us and saying in verse 8 that come, prophecies will pass. Tongues will cease. Gifts of knowledge will vanish away. But you know what? Love would still be here when everything else has faded away. So what should you do? Pursue love. What should you do? Strive after love. The pursuit of love is the greatest quest you and I would ever be involved in in this life. And it's the ultimate call to surrender to the Holy Spirit, abandon childishness, and embrace spiritual maturity. Why do I say so? The spiritually mature does not emphasize gifts at the expense of love. So to pursue love, when you say, so what, when Paul says pursue love, what does he mean? What is he talking about? To pursue love is to make love the definition and motivation of our lives. It means we make love, that's loving God, loving ourselves, loving our neighbor, the one definite purpose or goal towards which we praise with intense focus, with intense efforts, with intensity. Now, we pursue love when we take a decision that I'm not going to do anything, we're not going to do anything if that thing does not benefit the other person. When you've come to that place in your mind, when you, you decide that I will not do anything in this life if it will not be of benefit to the next person, you've actually walked, entered into that intentional pursuit of love. We are called to imitate God's unfailing love, to let love be the motive behind all not some, but all of our actions. But we cannot even begin to function in that dimension if we do not receive the love of God in ourselves. Which is why God had to use the whole of last Sunday to remind us that he loves us. God's love in us reorders our priorities and gives us new values. So when you 
when the love of God is not operating in us, we would naturally find ourselves behaving like the Corinthians. The things important to us would be the things unimportant to God. Our attention will be on the temporal and not on the eternal. And our focus will be on what we do, not on who we are. Such was the state of the Corinthian church that Paul was addressing. They were more interested in appearing loving than in being loving. They had more reverence for the gifts than the giver. Speaking in tongues, prophesying, manifesting gifts of knowledge and showing faith, even acting generously, were more important to that church than walking in love. And so Paul came with a strong admonition. He told them, pursue love. Because prophecy, knowledge, miracle moving, miracle walking faith, mountain moving faith, they're eternally irrelevant without love. Whatever you and I do on this earth is eternally irrelevant if the motive behind that action is not love. If you like sell everything you've ever acquired and give it out, if it is not for love, it's empty. Our motive of love is the only thing that will stand when prophecies and even this earth has faded away. So I feel like we in this generation are a lot like the Corinthian church. We place high value on gifts and neglect love. We want to see visions. We want to prophesy. We want to give words of knowledge. We want to walk in the gifts of power. We want to heal the sick. We want to raise the dead. Not because we want to be channels through which God reaches our world and shows his love, but because of, we long for the status that those gifts will confer on us. And so Paul comes to us and he's telling us through this text, not just this assembly, but the body of Christ, that as good and important as spiritual gifts are, and he's not saying choose either this or this, he's rearranging our priorities. As good and important as spiritual gifts are, they are temporary. They would one day all fade away. They would one day all cease. One day they will become all inoperative, but not love. Without love, every good gift we manifest is useless and of no eternal significance. So love is the only thing that we know will transcend time and into eternity. Paul calls it the more excellent way. Nothing else matters outside love. No prophecies, no knowledge, no gifts, no faith, no sacrifice, no liberality. And this love is reliable, it's constant. Last week we saw that this love never fails, it never ends, it never disappoints, it doesn't lose authority. Love was, love is, love will always be, because God is love. Gifts will fail, but love will never fail. So you can try to be patient, not out of love, but because you want to be known as a patient person. You know, we have been on this series for months, and this Sunday and the last time you will see me here are the last two, are literally our conclusion. God is awakening us to focus. Next time you see me here, he's going to be talking to you about embracing the person called love. Today he's calling you to pursue love. Because you can try to be patient, but not out of love. Because you want to be known as a patient man. You can try to be kind, not because you are loving not because you're driven by love or because you want to be known as a kind person. You may even try to present yourself as one who is not envious, who is not boastful, who is not proud. Or you may perfect the art, art of honoring others, of not celebrating injustice, of not celebrating unrighteousness. All those things that Paul has listed in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, you may literally perfect all of them. But Paul says it is vain. It is worthless. It is futile if you do all of these things and they are not motivated by love. We are called not to appear loving. We are called to love and to have love for one another. We are not called to merely do loving things for each other. A loving act is not always equal to a loving heart. So God is calling this assembly this morning to re-examine her priorities, re-examine your motive. When you gifted hope to somebody, what was your reason? When you gave the last time you gave gifts to somebody, what was your reason? What was the, what was the motive behind the kindness, the things you do, the beautiful things you do, the faith you display, the tongues you speak, the prayers you offer for the sick? What's, what's the driving? What's, what's, what's driving it? What's the motivation? Because Paul says without love, 
count it vain. Know that it's worthless and it's, it's futile. In our revival, fire, and power services, and even in our private do- devotions at home, how many of us even remember to ask God for the grace to consistently reflect his love to others? We don't. I don't know about you. We ask for gifts, for depths of revelation. We ask for grace to ascend into virgin a height of power. But God is not gift. The Bible says God, the, the Bible did not say God is gift. The Bible says God is love. Gifts are what God gives. Love is who God is. It takes the gift powered by love to truly make an impact that counts in time and eternity. We are living in a season of gifts in a season of generosity, of celebration. You may give everything you have. You may visit the orphanage. You may go to villages and run outreaches. But if it is not out of love, if it's because you want to be known or you want to update your status as one who is philanthropic, you already know your reward. It ends here because Paul calls it nothing. We are conduits of God's love. And the Father's desire is that we become a people defined by and motivated by love, not gifts. Gifts are channels through which we reflect the love of God. So if you can prophesy, if you've been gifted with the gift of prophecy, prophesy, but from the motivation of love. Whatever it is that you have been endowed with, let your motivation be love. Because gifts are not about us. We are called to be men. We are not called to be men who appear loving. We are called to be men who actually love. We are called, commanded to love as Christ loved. So I'm inviting us this morning, examine your priorities. What do you really pursue? Paul is calling us to pursue love because he knows that on this earth that we live in, love is elusive. Every day you meet unappealing people, unlovable people, it's extremely extremely unlikely that you want to love everybody in your sphere. It's a time where we sit down and look at certain people and begin to ask God, how can I love this person? How can I best love this person? Not because you don't already have ideas, but you know that that's your ideas. is not going to be love. It's because you just want to be a good man. There are people in your sphere that love doesn't just come out towards you, them easily. We are called to pursue love. And as we sit, as we rise for our conve- con- confessions this morning, I want us to surrender to the Holy Spirit and let the unconditional love of God stay us towards the pursuit of love towards others. That in this season and in the next year as we go into it, we will make sure that our motives, our our actions, our gifts are powered. Not because that's what we want to be known for. Not because of the status, but because they are driven by the love of God. Rise for our confessions this morning. And say with me please. Say, I am begotten of God to pursue love. Say it like you mean it. I am a love gift to those within my sphere of influence. Let's take that again. I am begotten of God to pursue love. I am a love gift to those within my sphere of influence. I care for the welfare, comfort, and salvation of those around me. I am learning daily to die to self and to live for the benefit of others. Today and always, I yield to the Holy Spirit to love others through me. I refuse to allow anything or anyone educate me out of the love of God. I am a conduit of God's grace and love. I am a system through which God reaches out to people in my world. My gifts are for the service of others. And for the upbuilding of the church, I choose daily to allow the love of God flow through me to others. I am learning to sacrificially love 
and put others first. My life is defined and motivated by love. I am a conduit of God's love and kindness. I am a carrier of the possibilities of heaven on earth. Today and always, I choose to believe the best of others. To never broadcast the flaws and failures of other people. To deny myself of worldly pleasures. That I may win God's pleasure. To never allow my heart to be conquered by evil. I am an extension of God on earth. A representative of the heart of God. I am committed to the good of other people. The love of God is at work in me. I am enabled to love the unlovable and to meet the needs I see. To give without demanding or expecting anything in return. To love in the midst of hatred and rejection. To let go of self and allow the love of Christ to flow through me. I choose daily to walk in love and to reflect God to my world. Just raise your hands and tell your Father, use me, Lord, to distribute your love to those in my sphere. Awaken your love in me. Use me to reflect your love. Show me how to love the different people that you bring my way. Equip me, precious Holy Spirit. Help me to walk in love daily. Love is not the work of children. It's the call of the spiritually mature. God is calling us to maturity. Say, Lord, let your love flow through me to everyone that you bring my way. Give me the wisdom to know how to love the different people that come my way.